Here are the top stories for today, January 23, 2020. The government says it will honor the current contract of water concessionaires with no significant changes. The House of Representatives held its first out-of-town plenary session at the Patanga City Convention Center. China confirms 440 cases of pneumonia caused by the novel coronavirus. And let's take a look at the week-long celebration of Chinese New Year in Iloilo. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Our top story for today, the government says it has no plan of taking embattled firms Manila Water and Maynilad out of the picture and will honor the current contract with no significant changes. Amid President Rodrigo Duterte's order to craft a new and acceptable water concession contract, the Metropolitan Water Works and Sewerage System on Wednesday said Duterte's move is only meant to ensure that the government will enter into a fresh water deal with Manila Water in Manila with a clean slate by 2022. MWSS Administrator Emmanuel Salamat said they are working closely with the two concessionaires as the contract agreement still exists. Earlier, Duterte said Manila Water and Maynila only have the option to either accept the new water contracts or face cancellation of their present deals. He also emphasized that it would be better if the two water companies just accept the new contracts. On the part of the MWSS, it suggested that the new water deal should have an acceptable provision that will allow both government and the two concessionaires to efficiently and prudently work together. Meanwhile, the Department of Public Works and Highways on Wednesday assured the public that decongesting EDSA within the six-year term of President Duterte is doable. Here is a glimpse of what he has to say. Of course, EDSA at this point, hindi na natin kayang i-widen. It's not cost-efficient. So, ang ginagawa natin ngayon is gumagawa na, tayo, gumagawa na kami ng mga bypass roads. And that, yun po ang strategy ni President Duterte. Gumagawa na siya ng mga skyways, mga bypass roads, so I'd like to individually ipapakita ko po kung ano po yung mga status ng ating mga roads. Ito po yung napaka-importante, yung Skyway Stage 3. This is a connect, it's a 18.3 kilometer, uh, 18.3 kilometer viaduct connecting NLEX to SLEX. So makikita nyo po yung ongoing construction. Uh, pag natapos po itong Skyway Stage 3, ang tra yung travel time from Makati to Balintawak, ngayon po, siguro kung... Uh, gagamitin yung EDSA, it will reach uh, almost maybe one and a half to two hours. Pag natapos po itong Skyway, the travel time from Makati to Balintawak will be reduced to 15 to 20 minutes. What is, ano pong, what is the status of this at this point? Uh, almost 76%, but at this point, maybe approaching 80% na yung construction. We're targeting to open this by April. So by April of this year, uh, 100,000 cars will be relieved from EDSA. EDSA today, the capacity of EDSA is 280,000. Um, the, the volume of traffic today is 400,000. Para ibalik natin sa dati, kailangan, kailangan natin i-reduce yung traffic by 120,000 cars. With this single project alone, ang expectation namin is almost 100,000 cars a day ang mawawala po sa EDSA. So with these projects, we can expect uh, there will be significant improvement by the second quarter of this year. So as early as this year, uh, malaki pong magiging improvement sa EDSA. The Presidential Communications Operations Office on Wednesday said that the new record high excellent public satisfaction with President Duterte's performance only proves that Filipinos are impressed with his legacy of real change. PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar said he welcomed the results of the Social Weather Station's December 13 to 16 poll, which showed that Duterte earned a net satisfaction score of excellent positive 72 in the last quarter of 2019. Andanar assured the public that Duterte, with the help of his administration, would continue to take initiatives aimed at improving the lives of all Filipinos. On Friday, 
the PCOO launched the Duterte Legacy Campaign, which showcases the three key pillars of the President's legacy, such as peace and order, infrastructure, development, and poverty alleviation. And Danar guaranteed that the current administration's programs and policies on poverty would still be pursued to address the basic and immediate needs of the people. He also said that Duterte's no-compromise stance on the alleged onerous deals with water concessionaires Manila Water and Maynilad Stays and the campaign against illegal drugs would remain relentless. More evacuation centers are being eyed to accommodate victims of calamities. Janis Kade tells us how the government is working for the completion of this project. The Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation has allotted 2 billion pesos for the construction of multipurpose evacuation centers nationwide. This will be used to accommodate victims of calamities such as super typhoons, floods, and volcanic eruptions, as well as for other community endeavors. Pagcor recently visited 11 temporary evacuation centers in Bawan, Batangas and some municipalities in Cavite, including Indang, Alfonso, Mendez, Amadeo, and Tagaytay. The agency distributed relief packs to over 4,300 families and donated non-food items like mosquito nets, slippers, detergent soaps, hygiene kits, and blankets. Meanwhile, the government is targeting more than 200 disaster-resilient evacuation centers this year to accommodate displaced individuals in times of calamity. In a weekly economic briefing held at Malacanang Palace, DPWH Secretary Mark Villar said around 114 evacuation centers have already been established under the leadership of President Duterte. He said the government's plan was to build two evacuation centers in every province. May plano po na magkaroon po ng additional budget para sa evacuation centers. Meron din po tayo na, uh, binanggit ko po kanina, meron na pong 100 plus evacuation centers. At yung iba na, nagagamit na po. And in fact, uh, in one of our evacuation centers, nalipat po yung mga evacuees from the school to the evacuation centers. So, kailangan pang dagdagan. Of course, uh, sa dami rin ng mga evacuees, uh, we need more. So, that's Yun ang sinasabi po ni President na kailangan pa natin dagdagan. And there are moves at this point to increase the budget of uh, for evacuation centers. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Still to come, the House of Representatives held its first out-of-town plenary session at the Patanga City Convention Center. And the Presidential Task Force on Media Security launches a campaign for the welfare of journalists. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Even as we reach out to every Filipino child or adult as mandated by the Constitution, still there are those who cannot make it to formal education. And so we are giving them this opportunity. So the poor, the marginalized, the young girl who has to raise a family at the age of 10 or a mother or a baby to pursue we give them a chance to pursue education. The young boy who has to help his fisher folk family or to work in factories, in farms during the day, they must have a chance also to take advantage of our educational facilities. So we give them this chance to learn, to develop their capacities, pursue higher education, and land better jobs. The House of Representatives on Wednesday held its first out-of-town plenary session at the Batangas City Convention Center to listen to the plight of the victims of the Taal volcano eruption. Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano said the House would listen to the immediate needs and concerns of those affected by the eruption, including barangay captains, mayors, and different representatives from evacuees. He highlighted that this is the first time the chamber has held its session outside Batasang Pambansa complex in Quezon City. Let's watch this.
The Presidential Task Force on Media Security has introduced a campaign combining the delivery of justice for victims and promotion of the professional and economic welfare of journalists. The campaign, dubbed PT Forms 2020, reinforced reloaded, will be launched in Tacloban City by the end of the month. PT Farms Executive Director Joel C. Eggko said they will push for the enactment of the Media Workers Welfare Bill under House Bill 2476, which seeks to uplift both the economic welfare and skills of local journalists. Eggko said the PT Farms will be reorganized and will hire additional personnel to man its teams for Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, and the National Capital Region. The task force and its media partners will also hold seminars on media safety, welfare and ethics in various provinces. The campaign marks the beginning of a fresh chapter in safeguarding press freedom in the country following the Ampatuan massacre considered as a dark chapter in Philippine media history. The Philippines has a record of 49 convictions on various cases of media violence, including the 31 accused in the massacre in 2009. In our business news, the Philippine agriculture sector grew by 0.4% in the fourth quarter of 2019, bringing full-year growth to 0.7%. The full-year growth figure, which is slightly faster than the 0.6% growth rate posted in 2018, falls short of the Department of Agriculture's target of at least 2.0% for 2019. The Philippine Statistics Authority said production increases were noted for crops, poultry and fisheries, while livestock production recorded a decrease from October to December. The total value of agricultural production amounted to 492 billion pesos, 5.3% lower compared to the same quarter in 2018. Agriculture Secretary William Dar noted that during the last months of 2019, the country was battered by typhoons such as Tisoy and Ursula, as well as the spread of the African swine fever. Dar said these challenges reflected the sector's resilience and resolve to rise above any adversity. In continued efforts to rehabilitate Marawi City, security and local officials have proposed the creation of oversight committees to promote transparency and alignment of operations. The proposal was presented in a dialogue by Western Mindanao Command Chief Siridito Sobehana on Tuesday, where they discussed resolutions for issues affecting Marawi City's rehabilitation. Sobehana said issues including cyber propaganda were discussed during the dialogue attended by traditional and elected leaders at the headquarters of the Army's 103rd Infantry Brigade. He said, local leaders vowed their full commitment to the Armed Forces Peace and Development Campaign in Mindanao. Brigadier General Generoso Ponyo, the newly installed Army's 103rd Infantry Brigade Commander, has assured the local leaders and other stakeholders in Marawi City that they will support them in their endeavors. As part of the government's move against contractualization, about 12,000 workers in the Bicol region were regularized in 2019. Workers in Soksarjen are also given wage hikes starting February. More on this from Bej Bondok. The Department of Labor and Employment in the Bicol region has reported an increase in the number of regularized workers last year. Joel Gonzalez, director of Dole Bicol, said 12,005 workers in the region were regularized by employers in 2019, higher than the over 11,000 workers recorded in 2018. Gonzalez said the Labor Department routinely inspects and evaluates private establishments' compliance with labor laws and social legislation. He said this is part of the 10-point agenda of President Rodrigo Duterte and Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III in response to end endo and the need for security of tenure. Meanwhile, the initial 15 peso installment of the two-tranche 25 peso wage increase for private workers in Soksaljen will take effect starting February 2. Dole Region Draft Director Sisinyo Cano said wage order number RBXII-21 
will be deemed officially effective after the completion of its 15-day publication period, which started last January 18. The new daily wage rates will increase to 326 pesos for non-agriculture workers and 305 pesos for those in agriculture, retail, and service sectors, with the integration of additional 15 pesos for the first tranche. The second tranche of 10 pesos will take effect on May 1, bringing the region's pay floor to 336 pesos and 315 pesos respectively. Kano said they are set to conduct a region-wide massive information campaign to ensure full compliance among employers on the new wage rates. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. Up next, China confirms 440 cases of pneumonia caused by the novel coronavirus. And let's take a look at the week-long celebration of Chinese New Year in Iloilo. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. the president signed executive order number no. 2 series of 2016 back in July 23 2016 madami nang mga naging developments sa ating national FOI program we have almost all of the 1000 national government agencies GOCCs SUCs and local water districts with their FOI manuals and half of that are on our FOI portal foi.gov.ph Meaning to say, ang mga kababayan natin can ask information from different government offices online or on paper-based. I tried to access the portal and then I tried to test it and then I was hoping that uh, just an ordinary program of the government, a new program, so maybe they're just they're adjusting with the system. But after three days, I, I received an email from the FOI. My query was answered after three days, so that's, I was very happy and satisfied with that. Program. The top most requested information on the FOI uh, program is legal documents. That makes up 42% of FOI requests. 39% of FOI requests are from datasets and statistics. 6% are personal information. So people are asking for copies of official SAL-IN as well as accomplishment reports and travel reports. From the past, kailangan kapag magre-request ka ng information, you have to personally visit the offices. Eh. Kahit galing ka sa Malayo, even if you're from province, yun yung address ng FOI. Kahit nasan ka, as long as you have reliable internet connection, you can access information or you can request. Aside from that, uh, it is somehow proactive. Kung yung request mo is na-request na ng ibang tao, makikita mo na siya doon. So you don't have to make another request. We are able to harmonize the executive order number two on the freedom of information with the data privacy law. Napaka importante lang ang protektahin ng ating mga uh, opisyal at mga kasama sa gobyerno ay ang mga sensitive personal information. Siguro ang pinagkaiba lang dun sa administrasyon ngayon na nakapagpasa ng FOIEO, talagang hindi sila tumigil. Hindi sila tumigil hanggat hindi nila na ipapasa kasi alam nila na kailangan yun ng tao. Na hindi lang para ipractice ng tao kung paano nila gagamitin yung right to information. But because the administration knows that this FOIEO will empower the people to practice their right to know kasi yun yung magiging gateway din eh, para mas makapag-participate sila sa decision making. It's a very successful program for me uh, since... I'm one of the first beneficiaries of the program, so I could attest of its efficacy and its efficiency. Ang FOI ay hindi lang para sa transparency. Hindi lang siya tool para labanan ang korupsyon and to maintain accountability in government. FOI is for knowledge, it's for information, it's for transparency, and it's for empowerment.
Chinese health authorities announced Wednesday that 440 confirmed cases of pneumonia caused by the novel coronavirus had been reported in 13 provincial-level regions in the country by Tuesday. The cases had resulted in nine deaths in central China's Hubei province. Altogether, 149 new confirmed cases were reported Tuesday. The novel Coronavirus Response and Coordination Center also announced on Wednesday that the first case of novel coronavirus had been reported in a hospital in Macau. A 52-year-old woman traveling from Wuhan of central China came to Centro Hospitalar Conde de Sao Januario Tuesday afternoon and was diagnosed with novel coronavirus pneumonia. Experts also said that respiratory transmissions is the main path of contagion and the virus is likely to mutate which will increase the risks of the pneumonia spreading. The Department of Health on Wednesday warned the public against the health issues which may be caused by a coronavirus. The DOH said the coronavirus is from a family of viruses that cause diseases characterized by cough and colds, leading to serious infections, pneumonia, acute respiratory syndrome, kidney problems, and even death. If other symptoms include fever, difficulty in breathing, and shortness of breath, the DOH advises the public to uh, make hand washing a habit and avoid contact with animals, avoid those who have cough and colds, covers one's mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing, drink plenty of water and ensure food are cooked properly, consult a health facility especially if one came from Wuhan, China. On Tuesday, Health Secretary Francisco Duque III said, the DOH is looking into a suspected case of novel coronavirus or 2019 NCOV after the arrival of a five-year-old Chinese boy who showed signs of fever, cough and throat irritation in Cebu City. The Mactan Cebu International Airport expressed confidence in opening more domestic flights as it signaled the complete renovation of its Terminal 1. Louis Ferrer, president of GMR Megawide Cebu Airport Corporation, said the unveiling of the commemorative marker led by President Rodrigo Duterte during the Sinulog last Sunday signaled the full renovation of the domestic terminal. Ferrer attributed MCIA's growth to the efforts of the airport stakeholders, highlighting the airport's capability to serve more than 50 million passengers. Lawyer Steve Dikdikan, general manager of Mactan Cebu International Airport Authority, underscored the strong partnership between the public and private sector as a factor in the prominent progress of the airport. The 1.8 billion peso renovation started after the opening of the new MCIA International Terminal in July 2018. Prior to the full-scale renovation, GMCAC had implemented several initial improvements to Terminal 1 to address urgent issues such as congestion and the effort to boost operational efficiency. The Chinese New Year is just around the corner and the Filipino Chinese community is inviting everyone to join their celebration. The event also aims to strengthen the relationship of Filipino Chinese with their fellow Ilongos. Here is our report. The Filipino Chinese community in Iloilo City encourages the public to be part of their New Year celebration. The celebration anchors on the theme, Filipino Chinese Community, Breaking Barriers and Building Bridges Towards United Iloilo Community. Ian Eric Pama, a member of the Chinese New Year Task Force, says, they believe that the Filipino and Chinese culture interacts with a long-time friendship of the Filipino and Chinese communities in the city. Pama said, the Chinese community, who owns businesses in the downtown area of the city, provides employment to Ilongos. Dr. Felipe Uygonko, chairman of the 2020 Chinese New Year Task Force, said their various civic organizations join hands in helping local Filipinos. The celebration will kick off with the Chinese Lantern Parade on January 27, followed by the launching of the Night Market and Food Festival. There will be a grand cultural show and fireworks display on January 29 at the Filipino-Chinese Friendship Arc at the Plazoleta Gay. 
It will culminate on February 2 with the Chinese New Year Mass at the Santa Maria Parish in the morning and a mall show by the Washong College of Iloilo in the afternoon at the SM City Iloilo. The celebration also involves all schools in the city providing Chinese education, three major business Filipino-Chinese organizations, and Chinese family associations. Uygongko said, the activity in Iloilo City is the biggest celebration being held outside of Metro Manila. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ruth Abigita Carlos. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. The government says it will honor the current contract of water concessionaires with no significant changes. The House of Representatives held its first out-of-town plenary session at the Patanga City Convention Center. China confirms 440 cases of pneumonia caused by the novel coronavirus. And let's take a look at the week-long celebration of Chinese New Year in Iloilo. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check out more news content, check our webpage or head onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.